Hey guys, welcome back to our walkthrough of classic poetry. Today I want to go over another one of the sonnets that I love from Edna St. Vincent Millay. This one's called Love Is Not All. And if you haven't already watched the walkthrough of Edna's uh, sonnet, Time Does Not Bring Relief, I encourage you to watch that first because we spend a little bit of time in there uh, going over exactly what makes a sonnet a sonnet and why it's a special form of poetry. As always, this uh, poem is written down below so you can follow along as I read aloud, and then we'll talk more about it afterwards. But here's Love Is Not All. Love is not all. It is not meat nor drink, nor slumber, nor a roof against the rain, nor yet a floating spar to men that sink and rise and sink and rise and sink again. Love cannot fill the thickened lung with breath, nor clean the blood, nor set the fractured bone. Yet many a man is making friends with death, even as I speak, for lack of love alone. It well may be that in a difficult hour, pinned down by need and moaning for release, or nagged by want past resolution's power, I might be driven to sell your love for peace, or trade the memory of this night for food. It may well be, I do not think I would. It's another really beautiful uh, sonnet from Edna St. Vincent Millay. You know, I love... Uh, I love the playful way that she always does her sonnets. You know, in the first one, Time Does Not Bring Relief, she starts off with the feisty opening line of, Time does not bring relief, you all have lied. You know, we got the sense that maybe her friends and family had come around her trying to encourage her after a lost love and had given her advice that she really didn't want to take, like, well, time heals all wounds, right? You'll get over this lost love. But we get the same sense because of the sarcastic nature of, how she opens up this second sonnet, you know, she says, love is not all. Well, that's obvious. We know, you know, we know love isn't everything, but you get the sense that maybe the same situation happened where her friends and family in a well-meaning way wanted to comfort her after she was grieving and heartbroken from a lost love. So, you know, they, they probably said the types of things like, well, cheer up, sweetie, you know, there's plenty of other things out there for you. I mean, love isn't everything, right? You know, which is not the kind of thing that you want to tell a person that's grieving from, you know, the heartbreak of a lost love. And so she decided to compose a poem about it, which we're all very thankful that she did. She begins by, you know, describing what love is not, right? Love isn't all. It's not food, right? It's not meat or drink. It's not sleep. It's not shelter. It's not all these things that are necessary for life nor will it save your life. She goes into, you know, if you're drowning, it's not going to be like a piece of wood that's going to help you from, from sinking into the bottom of the ocean. It's not going to fill your lung with breath if you're, if you're uh, suffocating. It won't clean your blood. It won't set your fractured bone. And then she starts to transition and, and says, yet many a man is making friends with death, even as I speak for lack of love alone. So even though she starts off the poem sarcastically by saying, well, of course I agree with you, love isn't everything, then she transitions and says, well, you know what, without it, is life even worth living? She says, many a man is making friends with death, even as I speak for lack of love alone that they're making friends with death. And then I love the way that she uh, concludes this poem. It's just so beautiful where she says, you know what, even if I'm lacking all of the necessities of life, right, pinned down by need and moaning for release or nagged by want, like just nagged by want, I want, I want, I want, and I can't have because I don't have the, uh, the money or the means to afford the things that I want. She says, even then, if I have absolutely nothing and I'm destitute and poor and just, and just moaning for release, she says, I might be tempted to sell your love for peace or trade the memory of this night for food. I might be, I do not think I would. It's just such a beautiful closing line to the poem, you know, because she's not even defiant. She's not saying, no, I'll never sell your love for peace. I'll never sell the memory of you for food. She's saying, you know, I might. I can't say what the future holds. I've never been in such a destitute situation. But what she's saying, which is really beautiful in the profound message of the poem, is that sure, love isn't everything, but it's the most important thing. And even if you had to choose love over food or shelter or the basic necessities of life, Edna's saying you should still choose love because without it, she said, you're making friends with death. So I hope you enjoyed this sonnet. I encourage you to read it uh, a couple more times. It's really beautiful. And then we'll go over Edna's uh, most famous sonnet here pretty quick in uh, one of the upcoming walkthroughs. 
Look forward to seeing you then.